All right. And so um, my topic uh, today is when do I need therapy for my stage two or stage three melanoma? In other words, when might I need what we call adjuvant therapy or some type of medical therapy after a successful surgery? And, um, you know, I think this is a, a, an incredible time to be in the melanoma field. We've had so many new uh, uh, treatments that are coming down the pike and, and so many wonderful things to talk about. And I'm sure my other, the other panelists are going to touch on some of those things. But when I first came out of training, um, you know, melanoma was still primarily a surgical disease. And you, you had good surgery and you had some type of therapy and either you recurred or you didn't. Um, and as you can see here, what, you know, what's the scope of the problem? Well, if you have stage three melanoma, in other words, melanoma that has spread to your lymph nodes, either macroscopically a node you can feel or microscopically in the form of a sentinel node biopsy, then you're at a very uh, high risk for recurrence. Um, so uh, especially if you have stage three B disease or three C disease or three D disease, meaning a thicker melanoma with uh, at least one or more positive nodes. Um, your risk of recurrence, you can see here, um, could be anywhere from 60 to 85 percent. So um, the I mean, the uh, the adjuvant therapy story starts with interferon, and uh, this is I had to dig way back in my uh, my slide files to find this, and this is uh, results from a trial called. Uh, ECOG 1684 it was run by uh, one of our, our good friends of AIM, uh, Dr. Uh, John Kirkwood out at uh, out of Pittsburgh, and was really one of the first uh, trials to show that there was an agent, interferon alpha in this case, that had some effect on recurrence in patients with stage three melanoma. Unfortunately, subsequent trials that used uh, interferon both in this country and in Europe failed to confirm this result. And so we quickly started looking for other agents that might help our patients uh, with uh, stage three melanoma. And I think many, as many of you are aware, uh, one of, where do we look when we're trying to find these agents? Well, we look at things that have been used successfully to treat patients with metastatic melanoma or stage four disease. And so uh, ipilimumab, or, uh, uh, which is a, a CTLA-4 inhibitor, is, was one of the first um, um, agents that showed efficacy in uh, a newer immunotherapy or target therapy that was used. Um, to treat patients with uh, metastatic melanoma. And so naturally, uh, there was a move to use it for uh, patients with um, stage three melanoma. And this is uh, the ETORC 18071 trial, which randomized patients to uh, either placebo or a very or a high dose of, of interferon, uh, excuse me, of ipilimumab, excuse me, uh, 10 milligrams uh, per kilogram. And again, um, what that showed was, um, was that, uh, that there was a impressive uh, benefit to using the high dose ipilimumab. Unfortunately, this was really a drug which at these doses, which did cause some toxicity, including life-threatening uh, complications. And we really weren't able to give it to patients who had any type of significant cardiac uh, or pulmonary um, um, uh, comorbidities. And so again, its use was, was somewhat limited, but uh, certainly for young, healthy patients, this was absolutely something that we uh, that we move towards and, uh, and, and use um, with some success. But as we all know, uh, a newer uh, uh, class of agents, the PD-1 inhibitors uh, came along and seemed to have uh, a good effect in stage four melanoma. In fact, still do and, and have really been one of the novel successes of, uh, uh, of immunotherapy in this country and is now used in a variety of different uh, tumors. But uh, he was used first in melanoma, and uh, and again after success in the stage four setting, um, trials were taken out, uh, uh, were, were started uh, to look at this in, in in stage three melanoma. In other words, patients who didn't have spread, distant spread, but only had had successful surgery for node positive melanoma. And uh, this is a, a the ETORC uh, thirteen twenty five trial, or, or known as the Keynote fifty four phase three trial, and again. One year relapse free survival after a year of uh, pembrolizumab was 75.4% versus only 61% for placebo. Um, the other uh, uh, PD-1 inhibitor, nivolumab, also was subjected to uh, rigorous clinical trials. This is a Checkmate 238 trial, which again, at one year uh, after uh, treatment uh, with, in the adjuvant setting, we noted a significant improvement in uh, um, 
survival. And these were in patients, uh, this trial actually randomized patients for, uh, to nivolumab versus the ipilimumab. And so this kind of set the stage for nivolumab to really take over uh, as the uh, primary agent in uh, adjuvant immunotherapy. Of course, there are patients who have a B600 uh, E or K mutation, a BRAF mutation in their tumors. And these patients are, can be afforded a slightly different uh, uh, treatment. So uh, these patients are eligible for a oral um, therapy, oral regimen of uh, dafrapinib and, and trametinib, um, a BRAF and MEK inhibitor combination. And again, this was uh, the so-called COMBI-AD trial uh, that looked at this, uh, at this um, uh, issue. And again, what you saw at one year was a significant improvement in overall survival versus placebo. Again, but to get in this trial, you had to have a B600 E or K mutation. This is not a drug combination for patients with wild type uh, melanoma. Those patients get the PD-1 inhibitor. And again, these have been durable um, uh, results. Uh, this was the initial um, uh, data out to three years. And then it's been reported uh, recently at ASCO, the 2020 ASCO uh, meeting, relapse free survival and overall survival have been um, found to be uh, durable out to uh, five years of follow-up in all patients or 60 months of follow-up. Again, kind of a gold standard of follow-up in patients with, um, with uh, treated in this, in this fashion. So, um, you know, I think I, I, that's, you know, I think we know what to do for patients with stage three melanoma, especially the three B and C and D melanomas. Those patients are at very high risk for occurrence and, and should be treated. But what about patients with thicker node negative primaries? In other words, the two B and two C um, uh, patients. So these are patients who have thicker melanomas, you know, three, four millimeters in depth plus, or have ulceration, yet uh, undergo a successful wide excision and have a negative sentinel lymph node biopsy. Well, I think for a long time, we just said, well, we just need to follow these patients. But unfortunately, a number of them have recurred, you know, and, and they don't tend to recur in their lymph nodes. They don't tend to recur um, at, at the primary site, but they can recur distantly, lung, liver, bone, brain. And so again, based on the successful trials for stage three melanoma, um, there's now have been new trials for uh, patients with stage two melanoma. This is the Keynote 716 trial, a trial that we've had open at Northwestern and has just recently met its accrual. And this randomized patients with uh, resected stage 2B and 2C melanomas, um, where they were randomized to either pembrolizumab for a year or placebo and followed for recurrence. And the primary endpoint was relapse-free survival with secondary endpoints of overall survival. Uh, distant metastasis-free survival and safety. And uh, again, the results of this are pending, but we're uh, very optimistic that this will uh, yield a, a positive result and that this will become the standard of care for our patients with, uh, with uh, stage two melanoma and help those patients have durable uh, disease-free survival. Um, fortunately, even though this, this uh, trial has closed to accrual at Northwestern and, and other sites across the country, we now have a very similar trial, which uses the other PD-1 inhibitor, nivolumab, um, in a phase three randomized uh, double bind trial. The good news in this trial is it's a two to one randomization. So about two thirds of the patients will actually get the drug as opposed to 50-50 in the other trial. So um, I know that was a quick overall in review and I think, um, uh, and I'm happy to take um, any questions. I'll just check the chat room um, and then we'll move on to our next speaker.